Yeah. Um, okay, sweet. Nice so time. which pair wants to go first? I guess Isa, we can go. Okay. That's okay with you. Yeah, I, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can share my screen because we made some edits. Okay. So um, am I on the right screen? Can you guys see my the code? Your code? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so pull up. So our issue um, was for users to be able to mark items on the shopping list as purchased. Um, and then in addition, um, after 24 hours after the purchase, um, it was supposed to automatically clear so that the issue is no longer marked as purchased. Um, and so what we did um, first, um, is we created a single item component. So before um, the single items had just been shown in an unordered list as part of the items list component. And we kind of broke that out um, in anticipation of having to add other things than just the checkbox. Um, so we created the single item component and added a checkbox to the left of each item name um, that the user can check to mark whether or not it's purchased. Um, and we created this handle change function so that when a user checks the checkbox in Firebase, the item is marked as purchased and the last purchase date is set to now. Um, and then if they uncheck the checkbox, then it does the opposite. It reverts to the prior last purchase date um, and marks the item as not purchased. Um, and then in order to accomplish the part of the issue where um, is purchase changes to false 24 hours later. Um, we created a use effect hook so that when the page is loaded or item is loaded, um, it checks to see if the purchase last purchase date is greater than 24 hours um, before today's date. And if so, then it um, marks purchased to false. Um, and then, um, Lastly, I added this set interval um, piece so that the page checks every minute whether or not the last purchase date has now become over 24 hours ago and updates accordingly, if so. And that was kind of a later addition due to some comments on the pull request. Um, Issa, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, I think that about sums it up. Um, yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, it was a good experience. I guess trying to solve the issue didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. Um, so it helps definitely help to have two people working on it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And shout out to um, Julia and Sandy for giving good, like constructive feedback on the pull request. Um, because prior we had had this use effect was um, an async await function. Um, and they correctly pointed out that we should actually have a separate async await function that we call within the use effect hook. Um, so due to their comments, um, we ma made some changes for that. So I appreciate them like taking a real hard look at the pull request and giving good constructive feedback. Nice. Awesome. Can you show it working on the live? Oh side? yeah, sure. So here or locally. Okay, so if I add an item like milk, um, if I add something else like uh, bread, um, I can mark, oh, let me open up the Firebase too. Um, so I can mark like bread as purchased. And then if I find, um, let's see, filter name, equals bread, 
um, you see that is purchase is marked as true and we have our last purchase date. Um, and then if I change this manually to something really old, I don't even know what this date would be, um, then is purchase changes to false and the check clears. I think that's the coolest part that it like does that by itself. I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. Sandy and Julia, you want to go next? Yes. So I can share my screen for you. Um, so our issue was issue number seven, and that is about having a welcoming prompt to add the first item if the list is empty to help them get oriented with how the app works. So we wanted to use a ternary for our uh, components in the items list. Uh, since we already had the snapshot a ternary for, for that, the condition, uh, we added a condition to check to see if the snapshot has any items inside. And so if it doesn't, then we have a prompt saying your shopping list is currently empty. Um, and then if it does have items in there, then we use uh, Kelsey and Isa's component, single item component, and mapped it uh, with each of the items and displayed onto the app. Um, Julia, would you like to talk about the add item button? Yeah, and if the user uh, wants to add any item in the welcome prompt, uh, we are directing the user to the add item uh, route. Yeah, history dot push. We used history, use history hook for that. And you could see it on here. When you create a new list, you will see the prompt. And then you add an item. It leads to the add item component. It was short. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Good to you. <laughs> cool. I'll pass it back to. Hmm, are we going to do retros first or? Uh, yeah, we'll do retros first. Okay, sweet. And that'll be uh, Scott. Indeed, it will. Um, I'm going to just pop into that. It's going to be my first, uh, first retro here. All right. See here. I made the board for you, too. Ah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, just going to pop into the TCL project here. This is me being uh, Mr. Coherent and prepared for, for everybody involved. Sorry about that. Um, we're in TCL 28, smart shopping list. And the retro board, oh, gosh, is in projects? Yeah. Yeah, it's in here projects. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I will go ahead and share this with y'all. And I'm also going to just post that link in the Zoom real quick, unless I've already done that. All right. So um, like everybody to do, um, much as with the last time we did this, is just go ahead and uh, take as much as, I'm going to say seven minutes. You got seven minutes to do this. Um, fill out kudos. What went well? What could go better? And AIs from uh, the last sprint. All right. I'm going to add some myself while we're all doing this, but uh, start the timer now. 1.18 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. This
And just FYI, gonna give everybody about three more minutes here. Thanks again, Lewis, for setting up this board for me. I'm not used to GitHub's uh, retros. More used to conducting this kind of thing in, uh, well, usually on a conference call with like the VP of some very angry company and uh, a Google Doc. So this is a much more uh, composed kind of system. Is anybody uh, still working on some of these? Ah, uh, yeah, like two more minutes. Do love the amount of positive feedback we've got in this retro. I think that's absolutely critical. I, I also, um, and you know, feel free to ignore the sound of my voice if, uh, if you're still working on writing stuff. But I also feel like, you know, if stuff needs to be improved, this is a really good place to like, you shouldn't be afraid of, of finding a way to indicate that here just because uh, that's, um, that's kind of the real purpose of, of retros. And in, in my particular discipline of engineering, um, site reliability engineering, there's usually uh, we do retros mostly when things go horribly, horribly wrong. So it's, we have, a special um, like non-threatening name for these, uh, we call them blameless postmortems. Uh, so actually now that I'm saying it out loud, it sounds a little bit worse. Usually no one actually dies. Postmortem is a little bit misleading. But... All right, just wrapping up here, one more minute. Anyway, the, the main point I wanted to make is that, um, you know, as long as the, the tenor of the what could be improved is not blame, but just indicating in a, a sort of polite and constructive way, like what, what needs to change. It's a, it's a useful column um, and I don't want anyone to be afraid of using it. Okay, that was seven minutes. I think I'm gonna get us, um, ah, thank you, Megan. <laughs> um, cool. So let's get rolling uh, with appreciations. Um, so Sandy, uh, this first one's yours. Yes, I wrote, thank you to Collab Music again because everyone is, I've been peer program with, they've just been so amazing. And I'm always learning something new from each and every single session. So I'm really thankful for that. I'm glad to hear that, Sandy. Uh, Kelsey, next one's yours. Yeah, so I'm, I wanted to shout out Sandy because when we paired two weeks ago, um, I was in a hotel room with my parents' dog and the dog was like clearly having separation anxiety that my parents were there <laughs> and was freaking out. And I was very frazzled and Sandy was very understanding and helped keep me on task so that we could get our issue done. <laughs> awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, Issa? Yes. Uh, just thank you to the mentors for um, taking the time to do office hours with us. Really helpful. That's our pleasure. I got to attend some more of those. Last time we had a really good rap session about career stuff that I thought was pretty fun. Um, Lewis, uh, sorry, um, Sandy, this one's yours. Yeah, shout out to Lewis for our previous office hour because he introduced us to live share and we were able to use that to code together, uh, work together on an issue. And that was really cool to see. So thank you, Lewis. Awesome. Love that shout out. Uh, next one is from Julia. Yeah, we were working with Issa two weeks ago. Uh, like we had some problems understanding the issue, like ticket. Issa um, was brainstorming really well, and he also made me understand better with his thinking. Yeah, thanks, Issa. Great feedback. 
already. Uh, next one, Sandy. Yes, thank you to the mentors for taking time out of their schedules. Um, Y'all have really busy schedules working and everything. So I really appreciate that. Y'all take some time out to help us out throughout this program. Thank you very much. We appreciate you too. Um, and Luis, your next one's yours. Uh, oh, uh, I appreciate, I, I noticed people have been adding issues for bugs and stuff of things that they want to think about. So I thought that was great. Great. Um, I, I tend to agree. That's fantastic. That's a great proactive kind of practice. And it's exactly the kind of thing we want to encourage in terms of like kind of work that goes beyond the coding is documenting that stuff. Couldn't agree more. Uh, next one's uh, Huya. Uh, thanks, Scott and Luis, for sharing your career experiences, like career advice uh, about like Cisco or like your companies. Uh, it's not, uh, it's helping me to learn more about companies, like how it's working. And uh, Megan for explaining how to work in paid programming sessions uh, and like learning really how it's going on. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. I, I think I speak for all of us when I say that. And also, I just kind of want to make this particular uh, call out to all the collabies. If uh, any of y'all have any questions about career stuff, don't feel like you have to sort of wait until the program's over. Please feel free to Slack us anytime. I'm sure we're all very happy to, you know, do uh, any kind of like resume talk or talk about like, you know, interview best practices, any of that kind of thing, uh, ad hoc as much as you want to and in, 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 the, in the office hours as well, as long as we're past all the issue stuff, you know, I think that's a great place to chat about that. I'm sure there's going to be some more structured chat about that later, but um, I'm always personally happy to go over that anytime. Um, and next one was Isis. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank all of my fellow collabies. Uh, it's been really awesome to work with all of you. And it's it's been great to see kind of the creative approaches that you all take to solve different solutions. Um, and yeah, it's just been a great experience. So thanks. Couldn't agree more. You all are fantastic. Uh, and last one was mine. Um, I just wanted to thank Megan for filling in for me uh, during our last stand up at a small family thing. So I uh, couldn't attend uh, at, at kind of the last minute, but um, that was a big help. So just wanted to make that particular shout out. All right, um, let's go into the positives. Uh, I'm, I'm loving how much positive feedback we've got here again. Just wanted to mention that's, uh, that's a great thing to see. You don't always get to see it in industry and I think we need more of that. Um, so glad to see all are bleeding the way. Um, first one was from Lewis. Uh, I was gonna say office hours went well this week. Uh, the team was able to merge their PRs uh, without many issues and we also completed an extra issue. So that was nice, an extra Fantastic. small. Always love to see that. Next one was from Isa. Um, yeah, I just, I think what's been going well for me is, um, you know, when we're working on issues, I feel like we're able to split up time evenly and fairly so that we can each, um, you know, get to code and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and, and also uh, I've appreciated, and I, I think the, the comments for the code reviews and the pull requests have, have been awesome. Isa makes a great point here. Couldn't agree with him more. I think, you know, the, uh, the entire uh, way that y'all have been conducting yourselves uh, has been just really positive. Lots of communication, lots of collaboration, um, and, you know, time management has also begun really well. So I'm, you know, very proud of all of you. <laughs> uh, next one is uh, from Megan. Yeah, uh, this is similar to what a lot of people have said already, but it seems like you all are doing a really awesome job of working through issues together, uh, like leaving code reviews. Uh, also, the demos feel like they've been going really smoothly, I'm just like splitting up who's going to talk about what. Uh, so great job. Seconded. Absolutely. Plus two. Um, uh, next one is from Kelsey. Yeah, so I mentioned this in um, our demo, but I think code reviews have been going really well this week in particular. Um, the others had definitely carefully reviewed our code and gave really good suggestions. So I think that those things have been um, going really well and really helpful. I love code reviews and I'm glad that you all do too. That's fantastic to hear. Um, Cool. And last one was from me. Um, I just wanted to say from today, um, the issue implementations went really slickly. Uh, I think it looks great. 
uh, the demos were good. They had really good context. I think, you know, that uh, I, I've noticed that um, the presentations on those are, are getting smoother and smoother. And I, I'm just really happy to see that. So, um, you know, nice work, everybody. Um, that's, that's just kudos all around. Um, yeah, nicely done. Cool. Moving on to the what could be uh, improved column. Uh, and the only issue here we have is from uh, Megan. Yeah. Um, Isa, what you were saying earlier about all of us being quiet made me think uh, of this. Would anybody be interested in doing sort of like a low key, like team bonding, like fun time? We could like play, I don't know, some sort of game like Scategories or Among Us or something just to sort of like hang out. We should totally no, it's also yeah. totally yeah, fine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> or not into that. <laughs> At Meraki, we played GeoGuessr. Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, so fun. <laughs> That's a fun one. <laughs> Has anyone not played GeoGuessr? I have not. Uh, never. Oh my gosh, okay, we'll have to do it's it. It's so much fun. They, <laughs> they drop you as in the street view in a random place in Google Earth, and like you have to figure out where you are by like <laughs> clicking a place on a map. That's actually awesome. It's that pretty really fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. We should try that sometime, and it's free, which is a nice, uh, nice added. Yeah, benefit. <laughs> love the free games. Um, I real okay. quick, I also had an improvement that I think if you refresh, okay, sorry, it's there now. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think it'd be cool if we had a just like a small recap for office hours. Um, like I, I was able to see the pull requests and on the merges and stuff um but just like if there are any changes or maybe not even changes just like explanations um for for code because i'm i'm still learning and i might not know uh like what certain things will do i think that'd be cool and that's a great idea um would uh, any other mentors have any objections to kind of maybe sticking a quick uh, office hours recap as uh, as maybe part of this weekly meeting or uh, or maybe we just have I don't know I'm not sure exactly what the best format would be for that maybe we like send out a summary email uh, afterward something like that yeah you, you, you can just, also make, just start uh, a slack thread yeah yeah just a slack slack thread would be good yeah, yeah I'm sorry I, I know I said I was going to record and I forgot <laughs> it's totally <laughs> fine you can All right. Uh, yeah, um, so I think that's going to do it for what could be improved. And that's uh, the final column here is going to be AIs. Um, so the first one is just what we talked about just now, um, Slack thread for recapping office hours and kind of keeping live notes on that. Um, I'll, I'll set something up for that. Um, uh, and uh, next one is from Megan. Uh, yeah, I'll schedule fun time. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. And then finally, Lewis. Um, oh, so I did look and the, there's only three more weeks of issues, but there's four meetings. So there's only gonna be three more sets of issues um, and only two more weeks where you're paired up. The last week is gonna be everyone working together. Um, so we're, we're very close to the end. So just make sure to, you, you're, you're all great at looking ahead. So just continue to look ahead and see what's coming up and just uh, plan accordingly. All right, I think that's a great thing to call out. Um, just you know, at this kind of roughly halfway point or so, um, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, you, you all have been exemplary. Really, really thrilled to have been working with you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, you know, for for participating so actively and and just being awesome. We're looking forward to this home stretch here. All righty, I think that's going to do it for the retro. Thanks everybody for uh, participating. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and I think that brings us on to uh, issue review. Yeah. Uh, and before I start, I was wondering, um, how is everyone doing on like time? Like, do you feel like you're spending a, a lot of a time on it, or not not a lot of time? Do you think you're like getting that five hour mark in for the project? I feel like majority of the weeks for me have been like less than five hours, like maybe a few hours, you know, um, yeah. with the exception of like the one week that Julia and I were working on our issue, uh, which was fine actually. But yeah, that's my experience. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree with that.
All right, so let me check the project brief. So we are on week, so this is week five. So the pairs will be Kelsey and Julia, then Sandy and Isa. So the, the issues this week are here. So the first one is as a user, I want to be able to filter my shopping list to make it easier to locate an item. So above the shopping list now, there's gonna be like a search field. And when someone types into the field, it can filter the list down based on what you type. Um, and uh, when the field has text in it, you should be able to tap like a button or something to clear the fields, so, so, sort of like clear button. Um, and the filter sh should match any part of the item name. Uh, so it shouldn't, should not only match the start of the string. So if you have something like scrambled eggs, you can still search eggs and it'll still appear. Um, and the next issue is as an item, I want my estimated next purchase date to be calculated at the time of my purchase. So the app can learn how often I buy different items. So the way this works is that there is a script here, uh, source lib estimates. So whenever you check off an item, it's gonna be able to calculate um, when the next purchase date will be. And uh, then you can save that into Firebase. And that's when like the, um, let me, I'll show you, let me show you. So in here, source. Um, there's this function here. So it, it takes a last estimate and it'll take how many times you've purchased an item. So it, you should probably start saving that as well as the- Can latest. you make your font size bigger? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, it'll take a last estimate date, um, last latest interval and a number of purchases and it calculates, tries to estimate when you'll get the next purchase. So this one, you're just basically gonna use that script to calculate the next purchase date and save that in Firebase. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. Does any pair want to work on a particular issue? First issue, be able also clear the input thread after the user finds the item. Um, there'll be a button to clear it. So it should be, um, it should be a reactive search field. So as you type, it filters it. Mm. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't need a button to search. Uh, it should just do it automatically. Mm. references wikisa i i do but i've i've like chosen it the last couple of times so um i'm i'm actually kind of impartial but i'm leaning towards one of the other so. <laughs> maybe the first one kelsey what do you think yeah the filtering yeah yeah, sure. All right. Oh, not me. Uh, like GitHub, right? <laughs> All right, so the number 10 will be Lisa and Sandy. Does anyone have any other questions about these? Cool. So then uh, I think that's everything then. So Megan will have office hours this week and then she's also gonna, we're also gonna talk about uh, games <laughs> in Slack. And then, um, I think that is everything I have. 
I am uh, checking the wireframe for our issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Like there is like details and delete button for every item. Will be. Oh, that um, that's in a later issue, I think. Mm -hmm. The delete button. Yeah, details uh, and. Yeah, you can you can ignore that for now. Okay. It's just this filter items piece. All right, yeah, thank you everyone. And uh, make sure to message us on Slack if you have any questions uh, about anything and we'll keep in touch. Cool. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have Thanks, a great everybody. week. Bye-bye everyone. Bye. -bye,